Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. Good day, good day, good day, good day. So excited to be here today with you as we continue with progress on purpose. As we uh, start this new week, we are in for the best run of the second half of the month. I am uh, so excited to come your way. I'm thrilled. I'm grateful uh, for this opportunity to come and minister to you uh, with your permission, with your willingness to allow progress on purpose of Pastor Mackenzie Kandizi to edify, to encourage, to empower, and uh, to inspire your life. So at this moment today, I want us to talk about something extremely important. I have five principles that I believe they are going to be a blessing and a total blessing to you, to me, as we keep on moving, as we chase after that which God has created us for, uh, progress on purpose. I want to uh, coach today on uh, empowering yourself on purpose, empowering yourself on purpose. I see you, my friend. Thank you for coming. I just want us to get in and get moving. I truly do believe that we are all in the business of living, and it is an honor for us to be in the land of the living. Don't take for granted the fact that you are alive. Don't take for granted the fact that you have challenges. Don't take it for granted that you can think, you can strategize, you can come out of some situations, you can stay in some situations. And through it all, you're becoming what God created you to be. All right, let's get into our coaching for today. Empowering yourself on purpose. How to empower yourself. Uh, on purpose, how to empower yourself on purpose. Don't, don't empower yourself by default. Don't empower yourself accidentally. But you need a game. You need a plan of how to empower you on purpose. How do I empower myself on purpose? Because I live with me. Then I know more about me. I know my fears. I know my concerns. And how can I be intentional and strategic about empowering myself? on purpose. And if you are here, that's what we are about to do. All right. As you know, we are practical, we are relevant, and always biblical. Here is Ecclesiastics chapter 9 and verse 10. I'm going to use Ecclesiastics chapter 9 and verse 10. And from this one text, we're going to find five principles that we're going to use to empower ourselves on purpose. Thank you, sir. I see one of my mentors. He is here with us uh, today, I know I'll be better after he observes me for a few minutes. It is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Read this way. It is a very powerful text, uh, which I think you will do yourself great when you think of you and how to empower you on purpose. It reads this way. This is from God. Whatever your hand defines to do, whatever your hand defines to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Whatever your hand defines to do. The scripture does not um, separate or define what whatever stands for. Is it positive? Is it negative? Well, God says whatever. Whatever your hand defines to do. If you take time to define that word, whatever, it is going to amaze you that many of us, we have so many limitations upon ourselves when heaven is saying whatever your hand defines to do, you put your mind to it, you put your heart to it, God says go for it. Go, 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 go. That's what heaven is saying. Because where all of us are going, to the grave, there's no work there, there's no planning there, there's no device there, there's no knowledge there. Come on, talk to me, there's no wisdom in the grave. But whatever your hand finds to do, please, I'm grateful for whatever you are doing. All right, don't underestimate whatever your hand is doing. Yes, from the smaller you move to the greater. But whilst you are at it, I want to just coach on how to empower yourself on purpose. How to empower yourself on purpose. Number one, there's one thing that will help you out to empower yourself on purpose. You need to have a strategy and a plan of empowering yourself. You need to have a corner, your power corner, where you go to when things are not happening. You need to, the song says, sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Okay. So here it is. Even David, the Bible says, when he was in trouble, when all his men were angry at him and everybody was sad and angry, the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. You got to have a strategy of empowering you on purpose. Let's go. Five. Number one, you got to 
don't, don't be easily don't be easily discouraged don't be easily uh <laughs> don't be easily discouraged okay if you're going to empower yourself on purpose this is extremely important it is your choice it is your choice you must understand that you are as strong as your choices you're as strong as your choices and life is all about choices you are where you are because it's a choice you are with me today because it's a choice i am with you today because it's a choice don't be easily discouraged don't be easily discouraged it's amazing that when you look at all the people in this world who have done more and empowered and contributed to humanity they went through a whole lot of stuff and the difference between them and the others that we do not remember or even know, it was an issue of discouragement. Discouragement is an emotion that, that listen, the enemy of your destiny will always use. Listen to me on this one. The greatest weapons of the enemy of your destiny, of the devil himself, listen to me, the greatest weaponry of the devil against you are emotional weapons. If we can handle our emotions, I'm telling you right there, <laughs> if we can contain, if we know how to have a strategy on our emotions, I am telling you, you're going to discover that you're going to, you and I, we are going to save ourselves of a lot of trouble in our lives. Discouragement, it's an emotion. Leave everything on the field. Don't be easily discouraged. Leave everything on the field. Try everything. There's a writer that I love. There's a little girl called Ellen. Uh, she wrote something very powerful. And she said, you know, we, 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 we accomplish a little because we attempt little. Okay. In other words, we can only accomplish in proportion to our attempts. And I want you to understand if you are to empower yourself on progress, it is very, very important that you, my friend, don't be easily discouraged. Don't be easily discouraged. You need to handle this emotional, emotional and mental weapons of the enemy. The devil plays it right here. The devil knows if anger can get you and throw you away, if joy can, that's why Jesus was said, Jesus was never elated by men's kudos and he was never deflected by men's discouragement. He had a balanced emotional being and he accomplished what he came to do. So number one, my friend, to empower yourself on purpose. Don't be easily discouraged. Don't be easily discouraged. Don't always throw the ball and walk away. Don't always threaten people that I'll quit. I'll walk away. I'll leave everybody. No, no, no. You need to understand. You know what the Lord said to Joshua? He said in Joshua chapter 1, be strong and very courageous. Go read that. Joshua chapter 1. The Lord didn't simply say be courageous. He said be very courageous. In other words, if you are going to be more than who you are and where you are and what you are, <laughs> don't be easily discouraged. All right. Here's number two. Number two, something that is very important. Never distracted by censure or unattracted by applause. And that's where many of us get it in. That emotional thing. Discouragement has destroyed so many dreams. Discouragement has um, robbed us of so many accomplishments. Because the first person who said no literally shut down. I, I was reading a story about Henry Ford. Henry Ford, the man who came up with the, with the, with the motor vehicle that we now ride and go everywhere. Ford. When For Ford was a bicycle mechanic, Ford was a bicycle mechanic. And so when he had this vision of a, motor, uh, of a, of a vehicle, um, he said, he, in his words, he is quoted as saying, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have wanted faster horses. Okay, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said, we want faster horses. So what he did, he went to Thomas Edison, the guy who came up with the light, with, with, with the light, with the light, uh, with the light bulb. And he went to him to talk to him about this vision. And you know what happened? Ed Thomas Edison literally discouraged Henry Ford of the venture that he was about to get into. I mean, you would have thought, uh, Thomas Edison was the right person to say, hey, go for it. It'll happen, man. I did it. You can do it. But he discouraged him. And thank God Henry Ford was not easily discouraged even by an expert. Uh, that's why we drive what we drive. We go where we go. So don't be easily, uh, don't be easily discouraged. That's number one. And number two, something extremely important in order for you to empower yourself on purpose, my friend. Just to have a strategy and a plan of keeping you uptick and moving and going. Life is life. Life is going to happen to all of us. <laughs>
Jesus puts it this way. Each day has its own quarter of trouble. Okay, every day God is on, it's on, let's go through it. But you must make up your mind that you are not going to be easily uh, discouraged. Number two, uh, be thankful. Be thankful for strong-willed critics. Now, now, now. This is crazy. When I wrote this down, I said, man, I had to walk through the corridors of my life. I discovered if you are going to uh, empower yourself on purpose, you need to know how to deal with strong-willed critics. Everybody is going to have some critics. If you wake up in the morning and you put one foot in front of the other, somebody is going to criticize something that you're doing. And you need to be thankful for those because I've discovered some of the strong-willed critics we have are the people who cut to the chase. If you want to know exactly what's going on, exactly what needs to happen, it's only that critics come in with the wrong attitude. So many of us, we are caught up in their attitude that we disregard the information. <laughs> You can, don't, don't throw away the information. Let me tell you something. Everybody, not everybody who is negative is not saying the truth. But here's what it is. Many of us, we are so caught up in the emotional world that we, because the attitude is not right, because the approach is not right, because you did not come to me and gave me respect. Lack of respect does not take away the fact in what's being said. <laughs> Be thankful for strong-willed critics. I've learned that you can learn more from your critics than from your friends. How many of us on this line have friends who, after you discovered something you are not doing right, and you talk to them and they said, oh, oh yeah, we saw that. When did you see that? Oh, we saw that last year. Why didn't you tell me? Well, we didn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> we didn't want to hurt your feelings. Oh, no, 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 no. Be thankful for strong-willed critics. My background is that of um, ministry. And let me tell you something. When you pastor, uh, if, if, if you are easily discouraged, man, you can't do it. If, if you are against everybody who criticizes you, man, you are done. But you need to get to a point. Somebody wrote something here. Two people will tell you the truth about yourself. One is the person who loves you, and the other is the person that dislikes you. Oh, I love that. The one who loves you will tell you the truth with the right attitude. <laughs> the one who dislikes you still tells you the truth with the wrong attitude. So if you're caught up in your emotions, you can miss on what somebody is giving you. So be thankful for strong-willed critics. All of us got this. Some are married to strong-willed critics. Others have got a boss who is a strong-willed critic. Others have got siblings who are strong-willed uh, uh, strong critics. You must get to a point in your life in order for you to empower yourself for progress on purpose to simply be grateful and thankful for strong-willed critics. Now, somebody says, how do you deal with them with strong-willed critics? I wish we had time on this. When you deal with a strong-willed critic, it, listen to me. Are you ready? Apologize but don't explain. Apologize, don't explain. Apologize even when it's not your fault, even if you know they're wrong, even if they don't get the context. Simply apologize, don't explain, keep moving. And many of us, we, 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 we turn our critics into the people who shut us down because we want to explain. Listen, you keep doing you and believing what God is pouring into your life, but be thankful for every strong-willed critic in your life. Simply apologize and keep on moving. Don't explain. Oh, God, it is number three, to empower yourself on purpose. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Whatever your hand finds to do. Here's number three. Number three, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. You're going to love this, Pastor Black. You're going to love this. Here it is. You ready? Number three, never assume what you can verify. <laughs> if you are going to empower yourself on purpose, never assume what you can verify. Yeah, they, 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 there's a difference right there. Many of us, we are discouraged because we assume everything. You know, some things you, you just need to verify. <laughs> Trust and verify. Never assume what you can verify. B -b because if you are to empower yourself, you know what I've discovered? I've been in ministry for 20-something years. And one thing I discovered dealing with people is this. We, we, if you don't... <laughs> All of us need to pump the brakes and walk back through your life and write notes, take notes, and write some 
principles that you have developed through your own existence. This is not a book that you have to write somewhere, but this is you just walking in with all that you know now, go back or walk back and see what you could have done differently and how you could have got it done. I discovered there's so much wisdom in your life. There's so much wisdom in your scars and with your scars. Oh God, I like it. There's so much wisdom in you that you give credit to yourself. I'm telling you, where you are now and you go back 20 years from, from, from today, going back? Oh my God, if you knew what you know now, but here's what it, that's what wisdom does. You walk back and you write the principles down and then you start applying them going forward and you teach the coming generations so that they don't repeat what you did. When you did it, you did it for all humanity. People don't have to go through what you went through, but they can literally eat fruit from the tree of your experience. So never assume what you can verify. Okay, ne ne never assume, don't assume anything. If you are going to empower yourself, ask questions. Ask questions. There is no damn question. You know, verify things. Don't just assume. I assume you loved me. Well, did you verify that thing? <laughs> it, it is a very, very important uh, um, th 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 that we do. Somebody says, sincere self-reflection, sincere self-reflection gives you an opportunity to verify what is often assumed. I like that. Self-reflection, self-reflection. My friends, we need to get to a place. And I think what the Christian church has done is we took everything, we, we took away the empowerment from the individual and we gave the empowerment to our church organizations so the individual has to verify with an organization which doesn't leave in the individual so the individual exists to serve the organization oh god don't get me started on it there are so many of us who gave so much power to people who have no clue how god is working on the inside so never assume what you can verify uh, okay you, you don't, don't don't assume somebody loves you when you can verify it <laughs> when was the last time they called you? When was the last time they texted you? When was the last time they remembered your birthday? Don't assume what you can verify. We can verify that. Don't, don't assume everybody's a Christian. People talk about, you don't know my relationship with God. No, I'm not assuming. I'm just going to verify that. I mean, it's, it's verifiable if you have a relationship with God. And so if you're going to empower yourself, and here's the kicker on number three, never assume what you can verify. Don't deny people self-revelation to you. <laughs> Don't deny people self-revelation to you. What they are revealing to you about themselves, believe it. Believe it. I, listen, what I've discovered in my life, man, here it is. I love people. I love heart. If you are my friend, man, we're going to go down. I, I, I love heart. Let me tell you, my strength and my weakness is the same thing. I love people. That's my strength. That's my weakness right there. I love hard. I love hard. And one thing I discover when you love hard, you have so much hope in people that even when they're telling you the truth about how they feel about you, you are going to justify them. You're going to give them what they need to make up their deficit. You do everything. No, 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 no. Never assume what you can verify. If I knew what I'm teaching you right now, I would have been, I would have enjoyed my ministry. I pastored some of the best churches in, in, in America and at the same time, some of the worst churches. Why? Because the people that were in there, listen, I assume stuff instead of simply verifying stuff. Okay, it matters. It really matters. It, it, even in your personal life, never assume what you can verify. You are empowering yourself on purpose. Okay, you are empowering you. You live with you. When everybody leaves you and you're 3 a.m. in the morning and you're all by yourself and you're turning and, and whatever you can't sleep, it's you, not them. So you must have peace with you. It matters for you to make yourself a priority. You need to put yourself a priority. You need to make yourself a priority when it comes to, to the empowerment of you. If I were to ask you a question, let me say this before I do give you the, the, the next two. Whatever you do, whatever your hand finds you to do it with all you got. If I were to ask you this, list for me uh, five in, um, besides God. Okay, God, that's Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. List five people, or let's go to ten. Ten people that, that, that you need in your life. Ten people that you, when a person shows you who they are, believe them the first time. I like that. 
All right. It's very, very important. If I were to ask you, list 10 people who are extremely important to you. Here's what I've done each time I've done training and I've asked people to do this. They have all struggled. Pastor, I have more than 10. Well, let's just work with 10. Okay. And people are crying. Man, I, I cannot leave that one. I cannot leave that one. Okay, fine. Don't show me your list. You ready for this? What number do you rank on your top 10 of the most important people to you? Where are you on your list? The majority of the people in this world, they're not even on the top 10. You know why? They assume. <laughs> Listen, you are not going to invest in you assuming that you give you the best thing that you need. Okay, you are not going to, to schedule a me time if you're not a priority to you. And you're going to be disappointed every time when you deal with other people because you want them to value you. But here's what I've discovered. Everyone who is around you, you train them how to treat you by how you treat yourself. <laughs> oh, never assume what you can verify. You need to become a priority in your life. That's not being selfish. No, it's knowing you because God is going to use you. And when you don't believe in you and God believes in you, there's going to be a crisis. Yeah, there's going to be a crisis when God believes in you and you don't believe in you and God wants to do it through you and you are doubting you and yet God believes you. Oh God, oh, 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 oh. you need to be at peace with you. So never assume what you can verify. It's empowering yourself on purpose. And then number four, Number four, number four is very, very powerful. How to empower yourself on purpose. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 10 says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Now, number four is very, number four, I had to walk back in my life. I had to walk back in my life, walk back into every situation I've been in, business deal, uh, church pastoring, uh, all the way to, to my college days, okay? Here's what I've discovered. If you are to empower yourself on purpose, listen to this, don't sick privileges. Don't sick privileges. I'm going to break this one down. It's an amazing thing. If you're going to empower yourself on purpose, don't sick privileges. Okay. Don't go after privilege. You know, because here's what happens. Privileges, it's easy for you to develop, to develop entitlements because of privileges. You know, being a pastor, there are so many privileges that you get just from that office of being a pastor. Okay, and if you seek privileges, that's when pride will come in. I mean, has it ever dawned on you that Lucifer, according to the Bible, Lucifer is the only created creature of God that could walk into the presence of God and come out of there alive. And yet when he got in there and he saw what he, we, have, we can never imagine, the book of Isaiah says, after seeing the amazingness of God, Lucifer thought of upgrading God and making himself a God. Privileges. Privileges can turn into entitlement and privileges can produce the worst pride. It, do you know privilege produce pride and pride turned an angel into a devil? My friends, don't seek privileges. I'm telling you, I know people who were good people before they had titles, and the day they got a title, because every title comes with privileges. If you start drinking the privilege of your title, you're going to lose who you are in the process. All right? The same is true in your own marriage. If you come in, isn't it funny that the person you dated and the person who tried to uh, sweep you off your feet, come on, talk to me, the person who had to use their own rent and mortgage and car note just to take you out to impress you, when you get married, they shift. It's not that the person has changed. The person is now seeking privileges of the new role that they have. And the love runs through, out, out through the window. Why? Because where privileges are, I'm telling you right now, it's easy for entitlements to come into the house. And where entitlements come in, you stop leaving life uh, as, um, as an honor. Okay? You start leaving life as a right. And you lose friends when you want to have friends by right. No, 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 no. Don't seek privileges if you are to empower yourself on, uh, on purpose. I wish somebody had told me this. And I'm so grateful that some of these things, I, I, I practiced some of these principles 
but I wasn't intentional. It was just me. And, and, and when, when you know when it's intentional, when it's part of your strategy, it's very easy for you to be okay with everybody who doesn't understand why you do what you do and how you do what you do. So it's very important. Don't seek privileges. If you are to empower yourself on purpose, uh, to my pastor friends who are out there, yes, there's a lot that comes with pastoring. But my friend, don't seek privileges. You need to understand, if everybody's getting into a line, just get into the line. I discovered that the more powerful you are and the more humble you are, the extreme powerful you become. <laughs> The more powerful you are and the humble you become, the more extremely powerful you become. Every person is inspired by a powerful, humble person. So it, it, it's easy to be full of pride if you have money, if you have a position, if you have a title. If you, if you want to empower yourself on purpose, don't seek privileges. It matters. If, if you just want to, it, and it's all in the story of Jesus. You know, when you look at it, it's very amazing that even when people came to Jesus and called him teacher, he would say, no, 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 no. There's only one. When they came in and say good, he said, no, 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 no. There's only one. Okay. He accepted worship purely with no explanations after the resurrection. When, 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 when Thomas had to cry out, my, my God and my Lord, and he never rebuked him for it. Because after the resurrection, it was a sealed deal. It was a done deal. But when you look at Jesus Christ, even though he was, that's why uh, Philippians chapter 2, 5 says, have this attitude, have this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, that even though he was equal to God, he did not consider it robbery. Oh, come on, somebody, talk to me. G Jesus the Christ did not consider it robbery for him to simply uh, empty himself. Even though he was God himself, Jesus never ever demanded privileges because of who he was. You know, Jesus was so, we call it incarnation. Okay, if you are to empower yourself on process, you're going to learn to incarnate. <laughs> You're going to learn to incarnate. In other words, you're going to get into the situation and be one of those in the situation that no, there's nothing about you that makes you different from the situation and then you work within the situation. If you are to empower yourself, I'm telling you, don't seek privileges. I had friends in my life uh, who were good friends before they had positions. Uh, they became presidents of conferences and life changed. And uh, they became, uh, uh, they, they got positions somewhere and life changed and they got a little bit of money and life changed because of the privileges. See, the privileges makes it harder. Now, nobody just gets to you because now you've got a system around you. Your friends who used to call you direct, now they have to go through someone else and then that someone else has to vet them. By the time they get to you, you have lost the essence of who that is. And in American politics, we call it the bubble. The greater you become in life, you build a bubble around you. Now, let me say this to you. This is very important. I'm almost done. One thing I've discovered, one mentor of mine, you always hear me talk about mentors. Because one thing I've discovered, I've learned in my life that I don't have it all. Okay? Nobody has it all. I may be good as a preacher. That doesn't make me good uh, with finances. So I have got a finance mentor. I need somebody to help me with money. I know the Bible. I can preach and teach this thing, but I need somebody else to come into my finances and help me be good. I need somebody to come into my parenting and help me to be a better father. I want somebody to come. I'm just telling you, I have a village. It takes a village for you to become what God wants you to be. Because whenever you are focused, oh God, here it is. Write this thing down. Focus creates blindness. Whenever you see any person and you say, oh, they are so focused. Let me tell you something, my friend. Every focused person has great blind spots because focus creates blindness. As I focus on you right now, I'm focusing on you right now. I do not see what's behind me. I do not see anything else, but because I'm focusing on you. The same is true with your life. When you have a focused life, you need more mentors who will look out for you where your eyes is not looking at. <laughs> so, 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 so one, one, one of my, my mentors, came to me and said something very powerful. Uh, it was in, in one of the conferences where I was pastoring, and, um, and she said something very powerful. She said, Pastor, be careful as you pastor in the church. Be careful of those who are closest to you. And then I said, why? 
And this person said, because the rest of your members are going to define you by how those who are closest to you behave concerning your vision for the church. Oh, that's a deep thing right there. In other words, if those who are around you, if you're calling for, a, for an evangelistic meeting and those who are seen to be close to you, they don't support any of your meetings, they don't come to prayer meeting, they don't come to Sabbath school, the rest of the church is going to believe that it's okay for them not to support because those who are closest to you, here's what it is, and I'm going to talk about, I think, I don't know, I may do a second video today on, on, on how to deal with your boss, just dealing with your boss on th this will blow your mind this will just move your career in another direction but here's what i discovered i said whoa they said listen because you need to understand access is powerful whoever you give access to becomes an extension of the definition of who you are access is a very powerful thing when people have access to you, they can leave your presence and speak for you. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's not me. Well, but that's what John said. And all John got to say is, I was with so and so. That's it. And then they put in their own opinion in there and it's on you. That's why the bigger you become as a leader, you're going to discover you cannot control your narrative. At some point as a leader... Others speak for you, others assume for you. And so if you are easily discouraged, you're going to run out of your destiny and out of your calling because how can they say this kind of stuff? That's what happens. The bigger the God's influence on your life becomes, you need to understand, my friend, that's why leadership ain't easy. We're going to talk about it someday. So don't seek privileges if you are to empower yourself on, on purpose. Listen to me. I say don't seek. Okay, I didn't say deny. There are some that you may say, oh, no, you know, I passed. But don't seek them. Don't leave life seeking privileges. Don't, don't leave life looking for privileges. You know, if I get close to so-and-so, what do I get? What's in it for me? What's going on? I'm telling you, it's going to rob you of the essence of you. It's going to create entitlement. And entitled people are prideful people. And entitled people are angry people because entitled people look down on people. Entitled people think they're better than other people. And I believe nobody is better than anyone. You can be better off, but you are never better than. And here's the last one, then I'll let you go. <laughs> Empower yourself uh, on purpose. Ecclesiastes 6, 9, 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, there's no device, there's no knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. All of us going to the grave on our way there. Whatever you find to do. It doesn't say only church things that you find to do. The text says whatever your hand finds to do. The vaccine of COVID-19 was not made in a church, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, organ, a church, or no. These were scientists that pull it together. Many of us limit ourselves. The more we get into church, the more we disqualify. Some of us stop leaving. Just surrender. We don't stop leaving. We, we have no hobby anymore. We have no things that we like to do. We have no places we like going to eat. We have no games that we play even at home. Why? Because we are spiritual. All we got to do is sing the hymns and sing the praise and worship and let's pull the Bible and prophecy and let's go with it. Listen, be balanced. Be balanced. Ecclesiastes says, it is, listen, Ecclesiastes says, don't be overly spiritual and don't be overly evil. That's what Ecclesiastes says. Be balanced. <laughs> all right, here's the last one. Now let me let you go. I love you all. Okay, it is. Number five, um, empowering yourself on purpose. Uh, this one is very important. If you are to empower yourself on purpose, you must know what pride looks like to you. Always know what pride looks like to you. There's nothing more dangerous in life to a dreamer when you are prideful and you don't even know it. You, my friend, must pray about it, dig deep inside you. You know you. You need, see, this creates an accountability structure. So you may need even accountability partners. 
as you empower yourself on purpose, you may need accountability partners. These are people that say, hey, you know, once in a while, just check on me. You, you, you love them. They're spiritual. You look up to them. You respect their opinion. These are your accountability partners. I have those. Those are the people who can call you and say, hey, dude, uh, something is going on. Even as I'm teaching and preaching, they can call me and say, hey, something is, is everything okay? <laughs> is everything okay? Well, what do you mean? Uh, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing something. I'm hearing something. You need, you need to create your accountability partners. All of us need it. Okay? Jesus, even though he was the son of God, he had Peter, John, and James. Paul had, had uh, Cyrus, Titus, Timothy, Barnabas. Every person who has ever made it had to have an accountability team so that you could bounce off your emotions and they're the people who can come in and approach you and talk to you about it. So know what pride looks like to you. Because pride stinks. And if you don't know what it looks like to you, you are going to be stinking. It's like somebody with a bad mouth, you know, your bad breath. <laughs> you have bad breath and you're smiling on everybody and you wonder why nobody wants to be close to you because you have bad breath because the breath is in your mouth is difficult for you to smell it. So, so you need to have cues that can let you know, hey, is everything okay? <laughs> What's going on? I, 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 listen, your own wife may refuse to kiss you because your breath is offensive and because you don't know what it looks like, it can become a fight. And yet, here's what, what matters. Know what pride looked like to you. So that no matter what you go through in life, whether you're promoted, whether you don't have, whether you, uh, people shout your names from the rooftops, you need to know what pride looks like to you so that when you pray to God for humility, my friend, and when somebody comes and corrects you, you are not offended. When you know what pride looks like to you and somebody comes and corrects you, you are not offended because I don't lose anything when you correct me. If anything, I become more when I'm corrected. And sometimes people correct you on the right thing that you're doing. I don't have to stop doing it, but I'm so grateful that what I'm doing, even though it's right, if I go to the extreme, it will be seen in a wrong light. Or how can I how can I best express the good that I'm doing that others are seeing as pride? You need, you need to know what pride looks like to you. That's empowering yourself on purpose. Because not everybody, somebody once came to me another day and they said, well, you have an attitude. You know, and I said to myself, yeah, some things need you to have an attitude. <laughs> So some progress in your life demands an attitude. Some things can only be done by people with an attitude. I mean, you can't be a president of a country without an attitude. Where, 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 where are you coming from? For you to think you, are, you can be the number one in any country. Yes, you need an attitude to get that going. You can't be a CEO without an attitude. But with that attitude, you must cover it with deep humility. And that's when the empowerment of leadership becomes uh, amazing on another level of influencing people. You have a strong drive, a strong attitude, and then it is enshrined in deep personal humility. I tell you, you get there. I wish somebody had taught me what I'm sharing with you. So blessings on you, my friends, as you empower yourself on a purpose. You need to be intentional about you. You need to make yourself a priority. You must be, uh, listen, outside of God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you need to get to the top of your list because everybody in your life benefits with the best version of you. When you are at your best, all of us who know you, who are connected to you somehow, we are all blessed and we are empowered because you, my friend, you have made yourself a priority. Self-care is very, very important, okay? If you're going to empower yourself on purpose, you need to have self-care. Self-care matters. Listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. Take a break. That's self-care. Go for a walk. Go for a jog. Be healthy. Self-care is important whenever you make yourself a priority. So may the Lord continue to bless you. I'm so excited that he came this way. Progress on purpose. I wish you well. Please, if you can subscribe to my channel, uh, Pastor Mackenzie Kandizi, uh, Progress on Purpose on YouTube, that would be great. Or my podcast, the same thing, Pastor Mackenzie Kandizi, Progress on Purpose. I will be grateful, eternally grateful to you because we want to reach as many people as we can 
through this avenue. Some of you have been asking, Pastor, you've been blessing my life. I'm receiving a lot of messages from many of you. And Pastor, we are blessed by what you're doing. How can we be a blessing to you and your team at Progress on Purpose? So you are going to discover on every video that I leave on my timeline, I am giving an opportunity to those who feel moved to support Progress on Purpose financially. Um, I'm leaving there my cash app and our, our Zelle information. If you are moved, if you are blessed and you say, listen, I want to bless the blesser, uh, we will not hinder you from doing what the Lord has put on your heart. Thank you so much, my friends. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, thank you for this moment and for wisdom and application and understanding, we pray. Amen. See you again, my friends. Keep on progressing. Keep on pushing. And let it all be on purpose.